Hey there guys, how we doing? Courtney Scott here with GoodWorks Tractors. Don't laugh at me, Owen. I've got my son Owen behind the camera there. He thinks it's funny videotaping dad. So anyway, but he's earning some money, okay? So he's got a car to buy in, what, two years or something like that, huh? Mm -hmm. Coming up soon. So anyway, so he's going to be helping me out today, but we're going to go ahead and talk about a snow pusher versus a, a bucket, okay? The advantages and disadvantages of each one. We'll go through them. We'll try to keep it brief, get you in, get you out, and get you on your way. If you wouldn't mind, please take a moment, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, check out my other videos, and here we go. So both of these can definitely be used for snow removal, and the clear advantage to having a bucket is that most of you that have a tractor are going to have a loader with a bucket already on it. And so that's definitely going to be the most cost-effective solution, which is the biggest advantage to the bucket. Um, another advantage with a bucket that you're going to have is that you can scoop it up if you have a big pile of snow, and you can stack it very easily that way. You know, you can scoop into it, kind of set it back there deeper to an extent. You know, you can only go as high as your loader can go, but that's going to be something that you can do quite effectively with the bucket. However, that being said, the same way that it works as an advantage to be able to scoop that up and dump it and stack it is also working as a disadvantage the rest of the time that you're using it because buckets in general are made to trap and hold material. And so the same thing applies to snow. And as you're moving along and plowing the snow, everything's getting trapped in here. These corners are very sharp corners. Um, the back is rounded a little bit, which helps, but you get a lot of snow that gets trapped in here and stays in here. And so what you find yourself doing in order to get that plowed snow, the pile that you've pushed, in order to get it to stay where it's at, every time you go down, you need to stop, you need to raise up your bucket, you need to roll it and rock it to empty it out, and then get it back down to level at the plowing uh, surface again, and then back up and start over. So one of the other disadvantages you're gonna have with a bucket is that you have a cutting edge or a scraping edge or a digging edge, whatever you might want to call it, on the bottom here. And that's great for a lot of applications. And yes, it can be great for removing really hard packed ice and snow that you want to dig in and get through. However, it's very likely to cause damage to your plowing surface, whether that is a concrete drive or stone or rock or whatever it might be. Because unless your surface is perfectly smooth without any bumps and eruptions or seams, it's going to have a real tendency to want to catch on those uneven areas or uh, seams or cracks or whatever there might be and cause damage and so that's going to peel out your gravel, peel out chunks of concrete, asphalt, that kind of thing. It's very easy to cause damage especially in the winter time because you're cold you're trying to get the job done quick and get back inside and warm up. So not only are you going to cause damage to the surface that you're plowing but you're also likely to cause damage or at least uh, long-term wear on the, the bucket edge itself especially if it's not a replaceable edge if this is an integrated edge like what this John Deere bucket has you'll fairly quickly wear down these corners here and get them back into the side plate and maybe wear down prematurely uh, the front plate as well. And so you want to think about that. Okay, so now let's talk about some advantages and disadvantages of the snow pusher, okay? And so clearly the disadvantage is you're going to have to buy one. <laughs> it doesn't come with the loader like a bucket does, okay? So you do have cost involved in this and that's a, a definite concern for a lot of you out there. Um, you know, one of the great things about the HLA snow pusher is that I think, and, I, and this sounds like a salesman type thing, but it, it's really not, but I think it's a really great value. This is some leading edge design in the snow pusher world, and you get that at a very comparable price to the other pushers that are on the market out there. Okay, so the first clear difference you're going to see is that there's obviously no bottom in the snow pusher, okay? And so if it were a good idea for there to be a bottom to a snow pusher, I think that snow pusher manufacturers would probably do so. So that's a pretty key difference there between a bucket and a snow pusher and should um, perhaps clearly paint the picture that having that bottom edge of the bucket is an ineffective solution for snow removal. So the next thing I'd like you to take a look at are going to be uh, specifically the design of the inside of the snow pusher here. And so you're going to see it's an open design all the way across. You do have double uh, paneled sidewalls here that are going to add strength and rigidity to the pusher itself. And then you have a rounded back similar to what the bucket is like. But those items there in combination allow the snow to roll forward, allow the snow to release easily from the snow pusher and not stay trapped in there. So imagine again, if you're pushing that same pile of snow as you were with a bucket, okay? When you get to the end and you wanna be done with that and back up and take your next pass with the bucket where you'd have to raise it up, roll it, shake it out, get back down to level, all you're doing with the snow pusher, you're pushing that pile where you want it to go, you slightly raise up just to get the cutting surface off the, off the surface that you're plowing and then you back up. There's no worrying about re-leveling. There's no time wasted that sitting there raising it up uh, high to be able to rock it and everything else. And so it's a lot more efficient in that regard. 
Next thing I'd like to take a look at on the snow pusher are going to be the skid shoes, skid runners that you're going to have, one on either end, okay? And so what that's going to do is allow you to have adjustability and flexibility in a couple different ways. So even if you are making contact with the surface that you're plowing as far as your cutting edge, if you want that whole cutting edge to, to be plowing the concrete drive, still a lot of that, that pressure is kind of spread out along these skid runners to help them go, glide smoothly and evenly. And if you hit bumps and uneven areas, it's going to help them uh, kind of go right over top of that. <laughs> so the other uh, thing about skid runners that makes them um, a nice feature to have on a tool like this is the fact that if you have a gravel drive or you want to have your cutting surface, this cutting edge here, uh, slightly above the surface that you're plowing, you can simply adjust your skid shoes to make that happen. Just, ad just adjust them so that they're down a little bit further and then your cutting edge is up. And so that is clearly going to protect your surface even more. Not really even an option on a bucket, okay? Next thing I'd like to take a look at here is going to be this big hunk of steel, this big black section of steel right here, and that's called a back drag, okay? And so a lot of snow pusher manufacturers have the back drags on there, but most of them are going to be a section, a strip that's right up here that's maybe, I don't know, four or five inches wide, while this whole area that's right here is open, okay? And so the difference with the HLA is that you can tell it's entirely closing the top, okay? And so think about this. When you roll this edge forward, this edge that's right up here on the top here is going to then become your cutting edge. And so you go up to a building edge and you can roll your whole snow pusher forward and then you can pull that snow back away from the building. So it's great for applications where you have no way to drive forward and push snow away from the edge of your building. You know, this allows you to go right up to it, roll this thing forward and then pull the snow back away. A pretty cool concept. So again, the difference is that you can trap all the snow in here. There's nowhere for the snow to escape, whereas a lot of the other snow pushers have that four or five inch strip here, and as soon as it piles up, it can easily spill over through this opening that's in there, and it's just not as effective. So another one of the great things that HLA has done, and they did this design improvement last year, is the quick attach frame, okay? And so you can get these for John Deere, you can get them for Skid Steer Quick Attach, Global Style, a lot of different styles out there, okay? And what you may notice is there's some bolts on here. These frames just bolt on now, okay? It used to be a welded on frame and you were pretty much stuck with just the John Deere Quick Attach then or the Skid Steer Quick Attach. And so they changed that design in their manufacturing process to allow more flexibility. So we can, meet, uh, we can fulfill more orders that way and then also, if you have a change in tractor manufacturer or just a change in tractor that has a different style of hookup, all you would have to do is just buy the frame instead of buying the entire pusher. And so we've already had that happen a few times, uh, which has been really great for customers to not have to invest in an entire new pusher, but just the frame itself. It's more cost effective that way. So one of the other great advantages about a snow pusher is the fact that you have replaceable parts on here, okay? And so your skid runners are replaceable, your cutting edge is replaceable, you know, and essentially even the, the back drag, if you needed it to be, could be replaceable. You can also add on a rubber cutting edge if you want to on here too, but uh, there's not really anything that's replaceable here on the bucket. And so once it's worn out, it's just worn out, you know? And so I do understand cost concerns and certainly there's no cheaper alternative to a bucket that you already have. However, long-term damage to both the bucket and the surface that you're plowing could potentially be more costly. Also, I do value my time, and so I think that being more efficient, whether you're plowing snow, mowing the lawn, doing the dishes, it doesn't matter. I, I just like to be efficient, and so a tool that can allow me to be more efficient is something that I appreciate. This one here is a 54-inch unit that's on a 1025R. I personally think it's the right size. Now, I do want to put out there that I am conservative, okay? The last thing I want to do is let anybody get a snow pusher that is just too big for their machine. And I'm going to be probably on the small side, okay, but I don't want people to get into trouble with not being able to push the snow. And it's not necessarily because the engine horsepower can't do it, it's mainly because of tractor weight. And no matter how much ballast weight you put on a tractor, you can only add so much, you know, to get, to get traction to push. And so something like a 1 Series like this or a BX, if you're a Kubota guy, a 54 inch is really the way to go. The other thing it's going to allow you to do, are you laughing at me? What's funny? I burped? I, I did, but we're not going to put that on camera. So, jeez.